Hello everybody, my name is Kids Coding and welcome back to day 3 of Bootstrap. So today's video is going to be about bootstrap buttons and how to make them. So let's get right in and talk about how to make a bootstrap button. So the first way is the really really simple way. So what we need to do first is obviously have our CDN. So we already have that. Then we need to make a body, like usual. And then after this, we need to make a button type, which will define a button like that. Then we need to include the class, which will include a button along with button danger or whatever color. This is just essentially whatever color. So you can do warning, you do info or whatever. If you don't know any of the colors, you can do danger like mine, but it'd be well suggested and recommended that you go check out the bootstrap colors video so you know all the colors and you have a variety to choose from. So um, yeah, so here we created a button, it's shortened as BTN. So we created a button and then we created a button and defined it as the color red. So it's going to be a red button. So then let's close it there and let's say a red button because that's essentially what it's going to be. So let's save it and let's reload it over here. And as you see, it's a red button. We can add a container class um, so that Um, so that it's like a little bit like better and it's like not off I guess you can say like that no that's not how it works let me move this like that there it should work now yeah like that so I just kind of push it up a little bit by adding a container class but yeah, that's pretty much what it does. Obviously, when you click on it, nothing happens because we didn't program that to happen. Um, but yeah, if I, um, I'm not going to go into like clicking on the button and stuff like that. But I'm just going to show you how to make a button. So right here, we made a simple red button. We can change it. We can change the color. So a yellow button. So we can save that and reload it. Now you see it's going to be a yellow button. So yeah, we can do all that kind of stuff, and that's just the simplest way on uh, how to make a button. So you can also do a, a link, you can do an input, and you can do a submit. These are the two other types of buttons that you can make. So links always start out with AHREF, that's the code for making a link. So let's make that a hashtag. And then let's add the class. Let's make that a button for BTN, and then BTN and then whatever color you want. I'm going to do danger. And then you need to define its role. And that role will be a button. To define it's a button. And then you add a, a button that is a link. And then you close it from there. Like that. So that is essentially how you make a link button. So it's going to be a link, obviously nothing's going to happen. So um, that's how you make a link. So next you can do an input types. Um, there's a button, there's the um, input button and there's the submit button. They both involve the input type. So you can do input type and then you define it. So we're gonna do a, we'll do a button because we're trying to create, a, create an input button. And then we have class, and let's do BTN, BTN, um, whatever color we want, um, danger. And then let's add a value to it. So like, what is it? And let's say it's an input button, because that's pretty much what it is. And let's say an input button, and then end it there, like that. Oh, my bad. You don't have to do anything. So yeah, um, that's the thing I was going to mention. So whenever you add an input type, you don't have to end it for some reason because we already defined it and everything is just going good. So you can do the same thing for the submit. Um, submit. We add an input type for the submit. So I'm just teaching you how the other kinds of things you can do, like a link, and then you can do an input button, and then you can do a submit button. So yeah, that's all I'm just showing you. But I think the, the um, basic button would be really helpful for you to learn. So let's add a button and then a button info like that. No, let's not add info. Let's do the same color. Let's do danger. 
and then we add the value as a submit button. But the value is just essentially the name, I think, so um, we can go back and change that. So like we can do an input button, a submit button. So the value is just a fancy way of just showing the text on top, like that. Oh, let me save it. There. So yeah, the value is just a fancier way of doing this, but the format's different for the input types. That that's because and that's why we don't we don't properly nest it like this. So yeah, that is th those are the other three types of buttons that you can do. You can even create a stroke button instead of a fill button, like what we did previously. So a stroke button is essentially a button, but um, the color is the outline. I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all know what a stroke is, but a stroke is just an outline on something. So we can just go ahead and we can add that. So let's see, outline, we need to go over here and then what is it i'm just trying to remember yeah btn and then we go over here and then we do outline hyphen and then outline i believe and then danger like that that way it's going to give a stroke of red that's why it's going to give a red stroke and then i think we can get rid of this right here we can get rid of the roll And then we can say a button with a red outline. Let's go back and change it over here. Um, let's make it a button type, which is a button. And then, so I'm essentially doing what we did at the beginning, but I'm adding an outline so that it can be a red outline instead of a fill color, like a red color with a red fill that so um class tn outline danger and then we can just do a red outline button and then end it with the button like that let's save it over here and let's reload and as you see like when you like hover over the button it's going to give the fill color but you see that it's just a stroke which is an outline like that I just call it stroke because in photos you do a stroke, but you can call it an outline, they're the same thing. So yeah, that's just pretty cool, I kind of like this instead of having the fill color. So yeah, it's just like tight. That looks pretty cool. So you can change the size by adding a, um, let me get rid of that. Okay, you can just change the size by adding a third button with the hyphen and then the size. So you, so, um, you can just change the size. So. You can do something like button and then danger. Now let's just do BTN large. Like that. Yeah, and then that's pretty much it. And then we can do a large button. So, so this is essentially going to um, make the button bigger. So it's going to, um, we can do the same thing and make a smaller button. So I'm just showing you the different sizes. You can change the size of the button. So, um, BTN, BTN, let me make this a different color, just cause, and then BTN, let's make this a small, small is SM, a small button, just like that. And when you see here, there's going to be a large button, there's going to be a small button. And the button that I said at the beginning, the default button is just the medium button, it's just a medium size, so, um, let's do that, and then let's go over here and paste that and then get rid of this like that and as you see right medium small medium large just three kinds small medium and large button so that is how you just change the sizes it's really simple you just add another btn and then whatever size you prefer large or small if you don't add one, then it then the um, browser just assumes it's a medium and it's a medium size like that. So then you can do um, another thing. You can make it like stretch across the entire viewport. 
so let's say we can go over here and then let's add a BTN block. Yeah, it's a BTN block, just like that. Let's say it's a large button again. And as you see right here, it's going to stretch all the way. Um, let me get rid of the container. I'll probably show you how it's going to work. Or I think maybe I can add a container fluid. Maybe I can, oh, like that. So as you see right here, it's just going to give a completely large button. And that's just what BTN block allows you to do. It's just a big block, a big large button. So that it stretches all the way across the viewport like that. I can even do this and it'll like stretch because it's responsive. So yeah, um, you can also, um, this can vary based on the size. So like I can add a size and then it will change like that. So it will get a little bit smaller because I added a BTNSM and then it will, and then you can make it large that way it can get larger like that. So yeah, it can vary based on the sizes. But that is how a BTN block works. The last thing I'm going to talk about is um, is how you can disable something. So like I can go over here and then I can close the quotes and then I can come after and press and type in disabled. So what disabled does is exactly what it is. You can't click the button. Like the button won't be clickable. So like if I go over here and I reload, you can't click on it. It's not clickable. So disable voids the click on the button. And it's kind of really helpful when you're in like a testing phase or something like that. But those are all the different types of buttons and that's how you work with bootstrap buttons. That concludes day three. So if you had any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'm not really good at explaining, but I hope you understood. But if you had any questions, once again, leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe if you found them helpful. Same thing, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll do four more consecutive uploads so that we can reach a seven day streak. And yeah, follow my Insta if you're interested. Link's in the description below. And check out my website at kidscoding.com and I'll see y'all next time.